Final match here of our Season 1 Invitational winner, $20,000 buys and free entry into Opens and Classics. Their likeness on a token. And most importantly, most importantly, a winner's interview with Nick Miller. Mm -hmm. Because not many people get that. And perhaps a surprise interview with Matthias Hunt, depending where he's skulking around That's on the floor. That's true. You don't, you don't know where he's going to be. He you, could be anywhere. You can usually find him because of the hat. But he's done a very good job camouflaging in. That's true. Surprising people. Ask him how they felt about the match they just won. I want to be the winner. I want, cards. Do, I want to do the winners. I want to do the, the on-the-floor reporting. Oh, I want to do after-hours guerrilla reporting. Oh, after-hours? On, on or after. I mean, okay. I'm happy either way. But I want to shove a mic right in someone's face after they win or lose. I could get some answers out of Kawhi Leonard for sure. Just go up to the person who just lost and go just like, what do you think was the worst play your opponent made? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I would love it. I would have such a good time with that one. On a scale one. of 10, how mad are you? You just lost. Right. Where are you going? Where are you going? Yeah. We, could do, we could ask the tough, the tough questions. Tough acting to acting. Is he, what is that, by the way? I think tough acting to acting. Anybody know? I think the it's aspirin? a fungal spray. <laughs> That's tough. That's tough. Athlete's foot cure, I've been. Yeah. Well, it better be tough acting then. Both these players taking a look at their opening hand. If they want to sponsor us, they can. Poorly named because afflicted my father, who was not an athlete. I would say it's not poorly named. I remembered it. No, I meant athlete's foot. Not oh, well, that's just a made-up thing. No one even knows what that is. We're underway. Hollow Fountain to begin here for Colin Roundtree. Well, I, I did it, and so did our producer, at least. So two but, but no, thirds no of people. No one knows what is athlete's foot. No one actually knows what that is. You just know that it's a thing. Lanor Elves for Kevin, hero of Precinct 1. Colin, great starts here for both players. Is there a removal spell? No, there's a wild growth walker. Roundtree, be a great time for Teferi. Just saying. Another hero, but no third land. Tough break there for Colin. Kevin does have a third land. It's going to be a hinterland harbor that enters the battlefield untapped. He's going to tap three mana. He's going to play a Jade Light Ranger. That's going to be double explore. Command the Dread Horde's a top card. It's hard to say no to that unless you already have one in hand. But I suppose you could always get it back with Tamio as well. Looks like he's gonna, Kevin's going to leave it on top. Uh, two counters on the J-Light Ranger. Two counters on the Wild Growth Walker. Going to gain six life up to 24. Could even make an attack now if he wants. Yeah, all other things being equal. Even if you think the call is close here, ensuring uh, keeping a, a spell on top of the deck. It's a spot where Fanakit kind of wants to get the game over with before Roundtree draws out of it. And uh, just having the largest creatures on the battlefield is a good path there. Well, has got three copies of Hero of Precinct 1. Let's see what this is going to be. It could be Nissa who shakes the world. And it is. So the powerful Planeswalker is going to join the fray as well. Now, Kevin's going to be untapping a land and adding some counters to it. And that land, of course, will have Vigilance. And it's going to be a Woodland Cemetery. And as good as the start is for Thanakit, if Roundtree happens to find a third land and a gold spell, the ground gets locked up pretty fast. Mm -hmm. And then Thanakit kind of has to pivot to his later game involving Hydroid Crisis and Planeswalkers. Now, is it worth tendering a double block here in the Woodland Cemetery? That's, I think, a, a real question here because you do want to kind of cut out the mana resources when you're playing against Nyssa. However, it looks like all this damage is going to come through. So if you're calling Roundtree, you've got to find something like a Teferi or the ability to cast some sort of gold spell this turn. Yeah. Black source necessary. Land number three gets you to a spot where you might be able to kill the Nyssa if you can get rid of the 3-3 three, three with Oath of Kaya or with a Teferi. It looks like Roundtree has it. Looks like Oath of Kaya is exactly what the doctor ordered. And now you're going to see those heroes take care of that Nyssa. And you've got some good creatures back on defense. And you have to imagine every spell that Colin plays moving forward is going to generate three tokens. I'd be shocked if that didn't happen. Remember that Roundtree knows that Thanakit does have a copy of Command the Dreadhorde in hand. Which there isn't a whole lot to be done about that other than trying your best to contain Thanakit's mana. Maybe even a removal spell on Land of War Elves somewhere down the line. It's gonna be hard to keep him off of six forever though. There's a Jade Light Ranger. Triggers a plenty. Breeding pool is one. Next one is Command the Dreadhorde. That is going to go into the graveyard because Thanakit already has one of those. 
Wild Growth Walker will grow and gain a little bit of life as we go. This should bring Thanakin up to 30, and it does. And is there attack to be had here? It's going to be Chump Block City almost no matter what. Here comes Wild Growth Walker and the Jade Light Ranger. Keep in mind, Jade Light Ranger is a 4-3, so a triple, clock, triple block pardon me, could have been tendered but will not be. We're going to head over to Colin Roundtree now. He will draw a card very quickly. I have to imagine he's got spells to cast at this stage now that he finally found that third land in Black Mana Source, and you can at least see a Dispark at hand. His life total being the way that it is, though, um, he's got to put an emphasis on casting gold cards here. Even something like Narset may not be a very good use of his turn. Going to fall down to six. Needs well, more chump blockers. Well, here's four of them. Basilica Bell Haunt, three life, three more blockers. Let's call it four in addition to the Bell Haunt itself. And, of course, Thanakit will have to discard. It looks like he discarded a Woodland Cemetery. So let's go ahead and move back over to Kevin as Colin is starting to catch up here, I'd say. And the Command of the Dreadhorde's not particularly good right now. No, not a lot going on with the with the graveyard here, but I think Thanakit just picked up a Tamiyo. He might pivot to kind of trying to hang back on defense here a little bit and fill up his graveyard. Mm -hmm. Something that Tamio does an excellent job of. Because if Thanagat pluses the Tamio, it's not realistic for Roundtree to be able to get to it on the way back without having to put his real creatures into combat. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the Command of the Dread Horde that Roundtree already knows about uh, becomes even better. Well, there is a block on the Jade Light Ranger very quickly by a token. This is Tamio. Yeah, I was not a big fan of that attack there. I think if, if Anakin wants to go up to six here, he's a lot better with the Jade Light Ranger back on defense than Roundtree being down the one token. Take a look at the top couple of cards. The name is Hydroid Crisis. It's a whiff as Nyssa, Lana War Elves, and Assassin Trophy head into the graveyard among the relevant cards that are down there now. We're heading back over to Roundtree. He's found another land, I believe, in Goblet Shrine. So he should be functioning pretty well right now. He's going to go towards Nyssa. Nyssa's not going to bring any tokens along with it, but it will bring a little bit of card advantage. So... Oh, Narset, pardon me, not Nyssa. Is there a Thought Eraser in there? I have to imagine that's what he's looking for. Okay, it's going to be Teferi instead. Those three cards will randomly go to the bottom. All right, Goblet Shrine on tap, down to seven. Is this the Thought Eraser? This is to spark to take care of Tammy. Okay, so that problem's solved too. Three more tokens. Now, Colin can't start attacking yet, but he does have to find an answer to uh, the Command the Dread Horde that's in hand, even though it's not that good of a Command the Dread Horde just yet. Well, I mean, the, I, I, the answer to it is, I, I think, that Roundtree can just play on through it. Uh, right now, what you're looking at getting back. Anissa, Atlanta War Elves, not a whole lot of consequence. The Anissa's not worth a ton uh, because uh, the ground for the time being is locked up. Mm -hmm. All right, well, here's a Jade Light Ranger attack again. This is one of those times, yeah, where you can... You could, you could gang block, or you could just say, you know what, I'll just single block because I don't want that in your graveyard. Right. Yeah. Part of it is don't want to trade off. Also, I, I think uh, Roundtree could be better served um, with a lot of chump blocking to manage the, his own planeswalkers rather than trying to trade off on the battlefield. Sure. Woodland Cemetery is the land. Krasis was added to the grip. That's what Tamio was trying to find, and it succeeded as we head back over to Colin Roundtree. Narset activation, top handful of cards, Teferi is the find. Roundtree's got to feel like he's doing pretty well to be keeping up in this game given 
the difficult start as he's really starting to dig his heels in and get his car advantage engines online. Yeah, I mean, the ground's locked up, so that gives him a lot of cushion here to uh, buy some time, get his own players, walkers online, and it really puts the burden on Thanaket to get it over with because uh, everything else kind of staying at parity, Roundtree gets to play towards a Teferi emblem, and that's uh, easily going to win the game. Speaking of Teferi, here it is. The hero of Dominaria has arrived. As three more soldier tokens are made there from Hero of Precinct 1. So, Teferi is on five. Modern championship players. It's going to go on down to one. So it starts on starts on four, goes down to one. I think Roundtree was thinking about drawing a card, elected not to. Going to tuck something away, and we're going to head back over to Thanakit. Tucking away the Tamiel if it wasn't obvious enough. Let's see what comes next here for Kevin. As this game's starting to slip away a little bit here for him. Hinterland Harbor, the land. Yeah, his crisis is not worth a whole lot in the face of the Narset. Mm -hmm. His creatures on the ground are not worth a whole lot against Roundtree's board. And he's under some burden to try to pressure the Teferi as well. I know you feel as though if this game stays within... 7 to 12 turns is probably okay for Salt Eye Dreadhorde, but if we go longer than that, it's probably bad news. Yeah, long enough timeline. I think uh, Superhero is good. Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I think the Superhero's deck is liable to flood out um, in those sort of games, whereas Salt Eye Dreadhorde gets to convert into Krasis if the game goes on for a really long time. The issue for that is that I think we're at a point here where Thanakit is unlikely to be able to get Narset off the battlefield for the remainder of the game. If that happens, then the value of the crisis is just so low. And that takes away a lot of the Sultai deck's late game edge. And crisis is just a 4-4 now. Of course, not going to be drawing any cards. The fairy is going to draw a card. We'll see where Roundtree goes next. He might just be going to Teferi Time Raveler now to be able to bounce something. And you can even bounce the crisis if you want to. Mm -hmm. Delay that a little longer, and that's exactly what he's going to do. He'll draw another card. Keep in mind that was another multicolored spell is the Fairy of the Time Raffler. So that's three more tokens from Hero of Precinct 1. A Plains. Another Teferi. That's three more tokens from 9 to 12. Up to 5 goes the Teferi. Untap a couple of lands, pass the turn back over to Kevin Thanakin. It's getting tougher and tougher here for our Salt Eye Dreadhorde player, who still has, I believe, that Command the Dreadhorde in hand, but still not very much to do with it. And every attack that Kevin continues to make, it's the hope of being able to get his creatures into the graveyard. But now the Command the Dreadhorde plan is off the table because of a draw step thought eraser that was enabled by Teferi Time Raveler. I think Thanakin's out of it at this point. I mean, his battlefield has nothing of substance going on. The crisis is worth very little. Cast down is whatever. And Roundtree's got uh, a personal howling mine going into Ferry. Yeah. Hard to argue with this one. You know, this crisis is starting to look pretty mediocre. There's so many different ways for Roundtree to be able to handle it or at least delay it. And the fact that it's not drawing cards is a real burden. You're going to see Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, draw a card. We'll see where Roundtree wants to go from here. I mean, at this point, there's, what, one copy of Command the Dreadhorde left that Roundtree has to be mindful of? Tamiyo as well. Sure. Getting it back from the yep. graveyard. That's a real thing. Five mana. It looks like. No, actually six. Eh, maybe not. All right, how about another one of these? More tokens. New to fairy. Get that one out of here. 
tuck it away. 130 Looks like it's time to untap a couple of lands here. Teferi Time Raveler uses the plus. I think we might see another Thought Eraser in the draw step to take the Tamiyo that should be the draw step here. Which I think, uh, yep, I think Colin knows that. He's tracked that well and didn't forget. So now Thought Eraser will allow him to do a little surveilling and put a card to the graveyard. He's played a very nice game here, has Colin Roundtree. Especially, uh, I mean, having missed his third land drop and third color of mana for first three turns of the game, four turns of the game, a while. Cast down, going to finally finish off one of those heroes. Might be a little too late now, though, as Roundtree's going to untap all of these lands. Got to be feeling pretty darn good about things. And he might be able to get busy into the red zone soon because Thanakit doesn't have any cards in hand. He'll start by activating Teferi, Hero Dominaria, to draw a card. He has 21 tokens right now, so he's still a little ways away, but getting close. Slow down a little bit because he lost one of his heroes, but... Well, you might be able to do some 21 token attacks. That might leave you a little uh, the vulnerable. Old, the old Empty the Warrens? Yeah. Just Alpha Alpha. Gonna bounce an Oath of Kaya, draw a card now. Replay Oath of Kaya, because you might also be able to just clear the way for this. You play an Oath, maybe you finish off a Jade Light Ranger. You're gonna get two more tokens, of course. These are gonna be summoning signal. I believe that should only be two tokens, not three. Yeah. So there's only two heroes. I see our table spotter right on it. And now the follow-up. Is it to Fairy Time Raveler? That'll make some more tokens. That'll bounce Wild Growth Walker. I'd say the path's clear. Yeah, for a yep. pretty healthy attack here. And no fear of dying on the counter swing. Yeah, two jump blockers on the way back should come to it. Then it could, in theory, take all of this, but four tokens on the way back to block. Ten life's a lot. Yeah. There's the blocks. There will be an exchange. One thing that this does as well is it probably makes it so the Command of the Dreadhorde isn't as scary either. Not that I think that really works itself into the equation very much anymore. Well, Thenica, uh, there's not a whole lot going on in either player's graveyard, and Thenica just took north of 20 damage, right. so... And he knows he's beat. He's going to concede the game. So Colin Roundtree, after some stumbles and fumbles with the mana, drew not one, not two, but three copies of Hero of Precinct 1. And that's why he's going to have a one next to his name. He's on the board first here over Kevin Thanakit. Yeah, Thanakit couldn't get any of his card advantage going and couldn't find a crisis in time uh, before the game got locked up and Roundtree was able to just push ahead with his own Planeswalkers. And these players not going to go to the sideboard yet because, again, here in our elimination rounds, it is the first two games that are pre-sideboarded and the final three that are not. But as these players still have the opportunity to take a look at decklist and examine some things to make sure they do play these pre-sideboarded ga pre games, pardon me, to the best of their ability, we want to talk about the Season 2 schedule here on the SCG Tour. Season 2 will be beginning very soon. June 29th and the 30th will be here sooner than you think, just a couple weeks away, but we want to give everybody a little bit of time to recharge and refresh before we head out to Pittsburgh for a Team Modern Open. Then that'll get us into July with Worcester, Philadelphia, and Columbus. In August will be Richmond and Dallas. One open in September. That's Legacy in Syracuse. October is stacked, though. Philadelphia to start the month. Indianapolis, the regional championships, October 19th, which is modern. And then Atlanta at the end of the month. November and December, one event each. We'll be back here at the Berglund Center for SCG Con Winter featuring the Star City Games Invitational. That's November 14th through the 17th, and then after that, the Players' Championship, December 13th through the 15th. Plenty of playmats available here for you folks. Of course, for our standard opening classic players, it's Captain's Quarters, illustrated by Titus Lunter. For our modern opening classic players, it's Aurora's Light, illustrated by John Avon. And for our legacy classic and open players, it is Ripped from Reality, illustrated by Mark Teton. Again, these playmats were designed exclusively for the SCD Tour, and they are free and exclusive playmats with entry into any open, classic, infinite challenge, or sealed spectacular package. Go to StarCityGames.com slash schedule for more information. Game number two about to be underway here, Colin Roundtree. 
winning game number one after some slight stumbles and fumbles against Kevin Thanikit. Roundtree also qualifying for Mythic Championship three in Baltimore, or excuse me, in Baltimore, Barcelona. Big difference there. He's looking forward to going to that tournament. And I think a first or second place finish here has made uh, maybe funding that trip a little bit easier, to say the least. So congratulations to Colin for that. And maybe he'll be our token. Maybe he'll be going into the Players' Championship. He's got to win two more games, but he's got a very formidable opponent across the table from him in Kevin Thanikid. Got to feel good about getting that one, though, after uh, how bad his opening draw appeared to be. We're underway. Atlanta Orells is a great place to start here for Kevin Thanikid. He wants to get on the battlefield early because there's a hollowed fountain for Roundtree to start. Thanikid now has a Woodland Cemetery. This is a Merfolk Branch Walker. Trigger is a Hinterland Harbor. Blue Mana will not be a problem. Might even be able to get in a point of damage, too, unless it's another Land of Worlds, which it is. Okay. It's a pretty nice start here for Thanikit. Jeez. Yeah, I mean, this is the opening that can facilitate uh, something like Nissa or Tamiyo way ahead of schedule. Must Roundtree have a Thought Eraser or a Hero of Precinct 1 to be able to play Magic on the second turn of the game? He does not look thrilled at this start. Goblet Shrine's going to enter the battlefield untapped, and now there is a Thought Eraser. What's the opponent working with? It's Tamio, it's a J Light Ranger, a Vraska, and a Hinterland Harbor that was found via the Merfolk Branch Walker. Roundtree saying, I got to get this Tamio out of here. Don't want to deal with that thing. As Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, is surveilled to the graveyard. You know, part of the issue here with this kind of opening, not only is Stanikit playing way ahead of schedule, uh, but Roundtree's going to have a lot more trouble in this game getting much out of his Planeswalkers. Boy, Hydroid Krasis and Vraska are going to head to the graveyard. Now uh, here's an attack for four points of damage. Roundtree going to fall down to 14. Uh, thought maybe he'd have some interest in maybe keeping that, that, uh, that Hydroid Krasis, but Jade Light Ranger said, nah, put those to the graveyard. And Roundtree without a third land again. Not sure he's going to wiggle his way out of this one, though. No, no, this is asking a lot. Tyrant Scorn is going to take care of the Jade Light Ranger. This will be a Wild Growth Walker. It'd be a good time for a third land, maybe an Othakai here, folks. Draw, Swamp. That'll be a good start. Roundtree with some mana issues again this game. There aren't copies of Hero of Precinct 1 at this stage of things like there were in the last game. There's the Swamp. And now there's the Oath. Going to take care of the Branch Walker. The Smaller. Uh, smaller's incorrect. I mean, it's the biggest creature on the battlefield, but I think Wild Growth Walker has the most potential on the battlefield. Yeah, but uh, I think Roundtree kind of banking on, well, if Thanikit had an Explore creature in his hand, he would have cast it last turn. He had five mana. He could have played Wild Growth Walker plus a Jade Light Ranger or a Branch Walker. If you assume he doesn't have either one of those cards in his hand, then the Wild Growth Walker isn't that threatening, uh, and you're better off taking care of the 2-1. Well, if you're around here, you're hoping Vanekid doesn't draw anything too deadly, hoping to fade Hydroid Krasis or Nissa Who Shakes the World. And Kevin, deep in thought here, leads me to believe that he has not found any of those power cards. So he's just going to attack here for three. Round going to fall down to ten. And uh, there is a Vraska, Golgari Queen. Kevin will plus and pass it back over to Colin. Colin's got to be pretty happy with how things ended on that turn. Hopefully finding land number four is Roundtree, but it doesn't look like he will. At least not yet. Although with the Oath of Kaya, he can get a little bit of cushion here out of the Planeswalkers. If he plays it to Fairy and minuses, it's not the most appealing thing. You're not getting any real premium targets out of it. But it probably forces an attack from Thanakin on the way back. You get to trigger Oath of Kaya. You get a little bit more cushion here, get some life to play with, and maybe uh, make your land drops and start playing some of your better cards. Roundtree did not find the land off of the Teferi Time Raveler. It did bounce a Wild Growth Walker. Now you're going to see Vraska finish off the Teferi. This is going to be a pretty large Hydroid Crisis. It's going to be for four. That will allow Thana get to draw two cards and gain a little bit of life as well.
Water with Gravel under the battlefield tapped. We're heading back over to Roundtree, who's still suffering from those mana issues. Picked up a copy of Tyrant's Scorn, but that's not exactly what the doctor ordered. I think he was more interested in land number four. Time Raveler is going to bounce, and land where elves draw a card. I think he bricked on land again, and he did. We'll head back over to Fanakin now. And now the decision is, do you bother trying to interact with the Planeswalkers here at all? Or do you just say, I'm not going to trigger your Oath of Kaya and flood the battlefield, try to get the game over with? Also have the option of uh, maybe cashing in Vraska to finish it off. Well, you could finish off the Oath of Kaya or the Teferi. Mm -hmm. Either of those work. I think... Uh, you would prefer to plus the Frasca this turn to keep it around in the event that you want to use the minus mode the following turn. But if Thinnicate thinks he's got a kill in two turns rolled up here, uh, he may cash in Vraska right now. I'm going to float a green and sacrifice Llanowar Elf here. Get a little life and draw a card. Okay. Up to 21 goes Thinnicate. See what the plan is now. That is Atlanta Royals, so replacement one. Perhaps more Vraska fodder down the line. Now here comes Hydroid Crisis. Going to attack Roundtree for four. Put him to six. Big follow-up here for Kevin, perhaps. You see there's a Tamiyo in hand. It's a pretty darn good magic card. And there is Tamiyo. We'll see what the name is going to be here. The name was Nissa, who shakes the ground. But all that Tamio found was some ground to shake. Four lands go into the graveyard. The follow-up is a wild growth walker to pass the turn from Thanakit over to Roundtree. Not sure if Roundtree found land number four or not. But you can see he's got some thinking to do. Behind in a myriad of ways... He's going to tick up to Ferry. And now there's a hero. There's a land in Drowned Catacombs. He's going to pass the turn back. Keep in mind that sorceries can be played at instant speed now. Vraska's going to go after, I believe, the hero. Here's a Tyrant's Scorn. Yeah, first order of business here is to sort of clarify the game state a little bit from Thinnicate's side. See what Roundtree's up to. Tyrant Scorn took care of the Hydroid Crisis. Hero made a 1 1, then Hero died, of course, because of the Vraska activation. Uh oh. You know what this means. Yeah, if he's looking. I suppose it could be a Tamiyo activation, not the full-blown command of the Dreadhorde. But it's bad news either way if you're calling. We'll see what the name is this time. When the name was Command the Dreadhorde, it was a whiff. A couple of cast downs and a Tamiyo placed into the graveyard. Attention Magic players, this is the last call for registration for today's 4.30 Mountain Time Challenge. to attack. If you would like to play today's 4.30 Mountain Challenge, please... Suppose this token could trade with the Land World. But does Roundtree actually need it alive? I, 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 if you would like to be looks like he's just going to take the whole hit here. I was going to say, I don't know if you're getting a whole lot better than Land World Elf here, but... He's trying to set up a Planeswalker. He just might want to have a chump blocker for something bigger. Here's a bunch of mana. That's another copy of Hydroid Crisis. So Thanagate's going to gain two, draw two, and have a 4-4 flyer on the battlefield. A lot of things to be happy about there for Kevin as you continue to push your advantage and hope that Colony cannot catch back up.
Hinterland harbors the land for the turn. We'll go back over to Roundtree. Roundtree always in good spirits at the table. A serious customer to be sure, but always having fun playing the games. As now here's Basilica Bellhaunt. Roundtree going to go up to seven. Makes his opponent discard a Merfolk Branch Walker, and he will simply pass the turn back. So at seven here, if you can get rid of both blockers, you have a lethal attack. Strikes me They're as doable a cast down in the graveyard. Excuse me, he's a point short as things currently stand, but one explore trigger would get him over the line. There's cast down on the Basilica Bell Haunt. This is a Jade Light Ranger. This should do it here because now the Tamio can get the cast down out of the graveyard. Oh, he's already used the cat. He's already used the Tamio to do that once this turn. Oh, excuse me. It would require another removal spell if there is one. Assassin's Trophy will work. Kill that, kill you. I think Colin wants to get his land. Yeah. <laughs> before being attacked, thank you. Kevin Thanikit's going to tie things up here against Colin Roundtree. Assault Eye Dread Horde and Esper Superheroes are all tied up. It's time to go to the sideboard guide. Colin wants to take a little, bre a little breather here with so much on the line. Makes some sense. He'll BRB. Kevin might BRB as well. We're going to stay right here, at least for right now. Let's take a look at these sideboards. Let's start with Colin Roundtree. His three Lyra Dawnbringers, three Kaya's Wraths, two Elder Spells, two Duress, two Disparks, Nixlon's Binding, a Command the Dreadhorde, and a Cast Down. Um, I think he's going to want the Kaya's Wrath be able to manage Thinnicate's creatures, along with some stuff to handle the top end, the Elder Spells, the Duresses can come into that end. Um, the D Sparks, great here. I, I could even see the Cast Down coming in as just um, more ways to keep the battlefield clean and allow Roundtree to begin leverage, leveraging his Planeswalker as much sooner in the game. Well... We had the opportunity to have a little chit-chat with Colin on the floor with Matthias Hunt about how he uh, plans to approach and sideboard this matchup. So we'll throw there, and then we'll come back here and analyze Kevin's Are side of things. All right, yeah, I am here with Invitational finalist Colin Roundtree on... Esper Superheroes. Now, this is a matchup you just played in the semifinals. You're playing against Dan Jessup. We're a 3-1 winner in it. Uh, your opponent here playing the same deck, a bit of a different sideboard. I know he has a Narset in it. What was the strategy you used against Dan, and are we going to go back to it for this round? Yeah, so I just boarded in the Wraths, pretty much took out all the spot removal, like cast down entire Scorns. I took out my Heroes, which if Heroes unchecked, it's the best card in the matchup, but with uh, the likelihood that they're leaving in the Varaskas, I just don't want to have it as a liability. So I've just been taking them out. Uh, Dan showed me that he was willing to leave in all the Varaskas, so I just kept them in the board. Um, again, if I don't see any Varaskas, I'm probably going to bring in the heroes to just try to counteract some of the some of the leveling and sideboarding, I guess, and um, uh, board out the Wraths and then back in some more removal spells. Yeah, you had said that in your semifinal match, that there's this balance between Wraths or Heroes, depending on what your opponent is doing. But I, no matter what they're doing, what are the cards you really need to watch out for in these games? Yeah, the card you're mostly looking out for is um, Tamiyo. It's always, it shuts down your Thought Erasures, your Duresses. Um, it gets back the cards that you take with those cards as well. So it's, it's like Eternal Witness in that, in that sense as well. So, um, And then he has Elder Spell in his sideboard as well, so that can be a bit of a problem. And then if I have Bell Haunt, this is not as big of a problem because I can I can manage my life total, but I still have the problem where he can cast a huge crisis and that could take over the game as well. Did you keep the Bell Haunts in, in the semifinal match? We didn't see too many of them on the battlefield. Yes, I, I left them all in. You gotta have the Bell Haunts. <laughs> all right. Well, best of luck here in the finals. We'll send it back to Patrick and Cedric in the booth. That's Colin Roundtree. It looks like Kevin Thanikid. He's he wants out of here. He wants out. Maybe he's going to stay for a while. He's got three Ripjaw Raptors, two Thrashing Branthodons, two copies of the Elder Spell, two Disdainful Stroke, two Duress, a Vraska's Contempt, an Arset of his own, a Massacre Girl, and a Disdainful Stroke, all cards that we've uh, kind of liked. Yeah, the Disdainful Stroke, the Elder Spell, Negates, Duress, Vraska's Contempt, an Arset, uh, the Massacre Girl, and the 
Ripjaw Raptors and the Brontodons are for uh, more low-end aggressive decks, and the rest of the sideboard is for matchups like this one. Well, we got the opportunity to sit down and chat with Kevin as well, so we'll let him speak on what his plan is here for game number three and beyond. Welcome here from the Feature Match area. I'm here with finalist Kevin Thanakit playing here against Colin Roundtree. So you've been playing Sultai Dreadhorde, and I know you were playing this matchup in the semifinals. Yeah. So I want to talk about your strategy here as we switch over to the sideboarded games. So in the sideboard games, I'm expecting to bring in Kaya's Rass. So the biggest the biggest thing, um, so I'm kind of cutting my Wild Growth Walkers, my Land War Owls, stuff that are really weak against board wipes. I'm going more of a try to drop an early Murphy Burnish Walker or Jade Light and then try to hold spells to counter the reactors counters. So negate and Distrainal Stroke is really big in this match. I think the hardest card that he's going to have to deal with in this match is our uh, it's a Tamiyo. I think that's going to be play a big play, especially after looking at his list. He's running uh, one Command the Dreadhorde. I just have to be aware of uh, his main deck, Elder Spell. But regardless of that, I'm cutting about eight creatures, and I'm bringing about eight spells that kills Planeswalkers. I'm looking more of like these, and maybe a flex spot, maybe a cast down if he takes his heroes out. Now, I know different than your semifinal match, Colin's deck doesn't have any counter magic in it post board. Is that going to change how you play these games? Uh, yes. It's, it plays a big factor. Uh, in my semis, I had to watch out for Dovin's Veto, possibly the gate. I was, I was trying to play around. Like, there's a turn that I could have dread hoarded, but it, it was so obvious that he was pretty much showing his hand that he had the veto. So I kind of waited and hoped I could draw a dress or an gate to protect my. Command, I think in this finals match is going to come down to uh, the Command of the Dreadhorde resolving it, and I think that's pretty much what it's going to come down to. All right, we'll hope that happens. We'll send it back to Patrick and Cedric with the finals. Well, you've got to hear from the players. Now we're going to, going to get to watch them play game number three and beyond. And how they plan on sideboarding, we now know, or at least have a better idea of it. But now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. This should be fun. So much on the line here. An invite to the Players' Championship. Free entry and buys into Opens and Classics. Their likeness on a card, and I guess $20,000 for first, $10,000 for second. Not a bad payday. No, a fine, a fine weekend's work. Seems like a fine weekend's work of worth. Maybe they'll be joining us at the after party, too, here in... Beautiful run, Virginia. Though I gotta Are say, they invited? Yeah, sure. You sure? Sure, I'll invite them. That'll be my plus one. Okay. How about that? Yeah, I my plus say. my plus one's still open. It's been a rainy weekend here in the Oak, though. Yeah. Sun has not been shining. We got a lot of clouds. The rain machine's been on all weekend long. Was there, it was barely even able to land. Really took a lot of the fun out of the dunk tank. It did actually. I heard many things about it being very cold outside for the dunk tank. So. Yeah. But you know what? I'd say we bring the dunk tank back for winter outside. Really make them feel it. I will not participate in said dunk tank, but I'm thinking ice cold. I don't know. I felt the dunk tank was already pushing up against a, an acceptable line. Oh, stop. Have Busting little, it out in have November a, have is... Have a little fun. I think unprofessional. It's not the word I'd use. I'd say Mandatory. Though, once again, I will not be participating in any dunk tank-related activities. Mm -hmm. For I do not like to be submerged in water whatsoever. It is one of my least favorite things in the world. Pittsburgh, three weeks. I uh, know. It's like it doesn't end. <laughs> <laughs> the break will be nice. <laughs> the break will be nice. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were getting, we've been going at it. We did uh, Louisville two weeks ago. Yeah. Did Richmond getting, two weeks before, uh, three weeks before. Getting that. shades of my former life mm. on the road. Mm. You say you want to do that again. I don't know, pal. You know, I've been mulling. I, I'm all over a lot of options, you know. It's good. I take all the phone calls, as I, you know. I know you do. Uh, I think I might have broken something under the desk. Hold on. What? Oh, never mind. What? That's good. 
There's something down here. I, I thought I'd kick something loose, but it's just some box. Okay. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, sure. It's probably an important box. A little, little treasure trove. It's yeah. labeled Star City Games, and it's empty. Okay, great. Well, it holds all the screws that holds the desk together, so please Yeah, keep yeah, that. yeah. I'll leave it down there. I just yeah. want to, you know. Don't stand on that. Just felt something pop loose. Be a bad way for the broadcast to go out. The desk just comes crumbling down. That's true. Could get us a new desk. We just got these cozy chairs. You think Carnox makes desks? No, nah, but we could get that sponsorship locked yeah. up. Who makes desks out there? I... I don't want an IKEA sponsorship. I'll take a crate and barrel desk. Talk to you about crate and barrel. You ever go there? You got crate a house? And barrel. Yeah, I, ha I have. I bet you hate that. I do. Yeah. It's not true. It, I love a little C and B. It's actually it's actually kind of fun to just. The kids are just fascinated by everything. So am I. And that makes it fun. There's a lot of stuff in there that no one needs, and I love it. And I don't know if you knew this. There's a C and B too. No, I didn't know that. That's the college version. Because there's one on the that, University of Washington campus. That one escaped my uh, current news and events yeah. alert, I suppose. I was at the CNB a couple months ago. They didn't have something I was looking for. They said, you ever been to CNB too? I was like, no, of course not. I never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One on the other side of the city. Probably has a table you're looking for. They didn't. Mm -hmm. I drove over there and didn't check online. I just drove on over. It's a waste of a day, but I'm still I'm a big CNB fan. <laughs> CNB and Bed Bath and Beyond. Any excuse to drive out to a college campus and show off to the kids how much my life is in order. That's just not even close to true. Look at me buying a buying a desk. Yep, buying an overpriced desk that I'm not gonna see because I'm never home. Yep, that's right. Which won't fit in my car. That's, I that's don't, definitely true. I don't know how to assemble it. It's gonna stay in the box forever. <laughs> There are plenty of things in boxes at home. It's a lot of work to assemble things. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work. That's why I'm like anti-IKEA. You've got to assemble everything. That's, whew. I am not a handyman. The, the children had the time of their lives at IKEA when we went recently. Did you get them like hot dogs? They got food there and stuff too. Yeah, no, we, we, had, we had a lunch there. Okay. Ran around the store. Got in all sorts of trouble. Did I show you a photo of a... Uh, Griffin lounging in the bin full of sheepskins. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. loved it. They're so happy. Kevin on a mulligan of five. Colin not doing much better. Which is more of a labyrinth, Minnesota Airport or Ikea? Uh, Minnesota Airport. All right. Ikea's just got a lot of stuff in there. There's at least an excuse. Both players are going to start with some dual lands entering the battlefield tapped. Thought Eraser is going to select Nissa, who shakes the world. Going to leave Thanakit with a Merfolk Branchwalker. Thanakit's got lands, so that won't be an issue. And Branchwalker might find another one. Thought Eraser is going to surveil a Basilica Bell Haunt into the graveyard. This is a Branchwalker. Trigger, forest, land is found. Again, Thanakit's going to have no mana issues this game, even though it's a mulligan of five. He's got to find some spells, though. As Roundtree's got two blue black lands, there's a white mana source. That is a Teferi Time Raveler. Bounce that branch. Waka. Draw a card. Duress. Not bad. Roundtree's got plenty of spells in his deck. A couple copies of Kaya's Wrath. Another Teferi Time Raveler. Basilica Bell Haunt. A Swamp is the hand he's looking at. No second white source for that Bell Haunt. Though. Yeah, this hand really comes together with a second white mana. You can see the premium also on on uh, taking Nissa, even though it's a five-mana card, with that initial thought erasure, because Roundtree's hand is so good against creatures that all he has to be mindful of is Planeswalkers. At least at this stage of things, that's for sure. Thanakit going to take a long look before selecting with Duress. Again, Teferi Time Raveler is probably the best option. That's exactly what will be taken. Going to have to beat two Kai's Raths now, though. Basilica, Belhaunt, and Swamp. The rest of the hand there for Roundtree. Duress is done resolving. This is a forest. That's a Merfolk Branchwalker. There is a trigger. Disdainful Stroke is the reveal. There's a reason you kind of want to keep that card. But at the same time, there is a Teferi Time Raveler on the other side of the battlefield, so you might want to let it go. Yeah. You, he's not going to get a counter spell this game. You don't know. Let's see if Roundtree drew a white source. Plus, 
Water Grave, done. So now he gets to draw a Disdainful Stroke and kill the Teferi Time Rattler. All right. So? Perhaps I'm too pessimistic. Maybe he does get to cast a counter spell. We'll have to find out. Everything worked out on that particular turn. I will say that. This is a Jade Light Ranger. Trigger one is a forest. Two is a branch walker. That's going to go to the graveyard. Jade Light Ranger is a 3-2, and it drew a card. Riding back over to Round Tree now. He needs a second white source to be able to play Kaya's Wrath. He is going to play Kaya's Wrath. Take two to do it. But now he's cleared away those creatures. I like Round Tree's demeanor at the table a lot. He enjoys himself when he plays Magic. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> okay. Trust me. I watched him of his backup matches this weekend. He's having fun at the table. 22-year-old from Texas. Likes to play. Pretty darn good at playing. I'm into it. We're going to head back his way now. You know what? Plays quickly. Basilica Bell Haunt gets countered by Disdainful Stroke. Swamp. Pass the turn. We're back to Thanicut. Both these guys play fast. They got places to be. I respect it. That's a massacre, girl. A little bit of a surprise there, perhaps, but it's on the battlefield. Maybe this is a uh, concession to Hero. Yeah. Water of Graves going to end the battlefield tap. Maybe a little bit of frustration on Roundtree side. Looking to draw something of relevance as Massacre Girl is going to come in here for four points of damage. This human assassin is a legendary creature. Five mana, four, four with menace, so it's going to be pretty tough to block. When Massacre Girl enters the battlefield, each other creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Whenever a creature dies this turn, each creature other than Massacre Girl gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. So it's kill spree. Awesome flavor on that card, and I've seen it kill entire battlefields before, and I'm sure we will see that happen again. As Thanicate is tapping four mana for a Tameo, that's going to resolve. Looks like interested in getting back a Duress. Perhaps. Thanica taking a little while on this decision. Going to go with Duress now. And going to fire that off. So, Oath of Kaya and Kaya's Wrath. Oath of Kaya is going to bite the dust. Kaya's Wrath still in hand. Now be a pretty good time to draw Command of the Dread Horde. Even Teferi Hero Dominaria would be a big one. Yep. Just a Glacial Fortress, Kai's Wrath still in hand. Tamio's going to go on up. Pick a card, any card. I don't think this is a bad name. We'll see what the selection is. Let's command the Dreadhorde. It's a whiff. Both players want it. It's getting worse for Roundtree, though, because he's got less life to work with. He'll draw a card. He'll play Oath of Kaya. That's timely because it's going to finish off that. Now, do you cast Kai's Wrath to finish off the Massacre Girl? No, I would give it a, another turn. It, it paralyzes a lot of Thanicid's possible draws here. You know, what do you do if you draw a, a Hydroid Crisis, for example? How about a Narsa? That's not Perfect. Good. Lines up very well against the Kai's Wrath. Top couple of cards here for Thanicid. Did he find a Command the Dread Horde? Remember that Narsa? That's a one-of in the sideboard. It's timely right now for Kevin, who needed a big draw this turn to get himself further ahead in this game, and it looks like he may have found it. Yeah, I think it's in the sideboard and only one copy, not because of power level, but because double blue is hard for his deck to put together. Tamio is going to be the fine. It can be cast here. First things first, Massacre Girl is going to come in and deal four. Bronx is going to fall down to nine. Now Tamio's in. We'll see if Tamio wants to return something from the graveyard or if it will name something, it's going to return Nissa who shakes the world. And this game's getting mighty difficult here for Colin Roundtree. Yeah, all the things being equal, there's an incentive for Thanicid to get things out of the graveyard to try to dampen the effect of uh, Command the Dreadhorde on the other side. Um, also, make sure he gets his money in case Roundtree draws a removal spell for the Tamiya. This is an R set for Colin Roundtree. He is going to minus that and take a look at the top four cards. Oh, mm. no. Oh, no. You hate to see it. Oh, boy. All four to the bottom and still not willing to play the Kaya's Wrath yet. That is tough to watch. Tamio's going to go up. Command the Dreadhorde was the name last time. Vraska's Contempt is a reveal here. Command the Dreadhorde looks like it was the name again this time. And was not able to find it again. Narsek going to go down. Three and four. That is an Assassin's Trophy. 
Kyle wants to make sure that's good and random right there. Give it a good shuffle. That's right. Both Planeswalkers have been used this turn. But there's one waiting in the wings here for Kevin Thanikit. And it may be the best of the bunch in Nyssa, who shakes the world. That Planeswalker is going to go up. And that means the land's going to turn into a creature. Thanikit deciding which one it's going to be. And now that Hinterland Harbor... It's a three-power creature. It might be worth knocking off the Narset here. It's not going to be a lethal attack. So, so many dangerous spells in Roundtree's deck. It, you know, it. I understand the pain of dragging this game out because you get hit with the Oath of Kaya Sugar. Uh, Kaya's Wrath happens the following turn. You're you're ahead on the battlefield, but it's going to take you several turns to get it over with. Um, but you got to cut off as many Roundtree's draws as possible. I mean, if he draws Elder Spell right now... It would really turn this game around if Elder Spell plus Wrath you. Right. So I think you have to kill Narset in that situation, and that's exactly what happened. If the Elder Spell matchups like this, it's always got to be on the back of your mind. Normally you'd think you're super far ahead with all those Planeswalkers on the battlefield, but there's one spell that can undo them all. Going to start things off here with a Thought Eraser. Yep. Tamio on the battlefield. Yeah. Doesn't work. I, do, I don't know if you even get to see the hand. Spells ability is your opponent's control. Yeah. No, you, you don't get, discard anything. Right, yeah. You they, get to see the, stuff. Yeah. Right. And you still get to surveil, but they don't have to discard anything. Assassin's Trophy. Still hanging out in the hand along with Tamio. We're going to go over to Kevin Thanikit. He drew Command the Dread Horde. We're done. If we weren't done before, we're almost certainly done now. Well, also, Roundtree is losing the ability to do anything with Command the Dread Horde himself because it's just his life toll is just diminishing too much. Yep. And Colin is going to pack him up and pack him in and get ready to begin game number four as Kevin Thanikit does win game three. He's one game away now from being your season one invitational champion. And that was a mulligan to five there, but the Explore creatures gave him a, a base of material to work with to get off the ground. Uh, Roundtree flooded out, didn't really get an opportunity to do much with his Planeswalkers, and uh, looked bad. I mean, it, you mulligan the five cards, your opponent opens on a discard spell. That's supposed to be a game that's nearly impossible to win, but Thanakin was able to do it. you got to remember, Thanakin's hand had plenty of lands in it after the mulligan of five, and Merfolk Branchwalker found another one. So casting spells was never really going to be an issue in that game. It was more so drawing and finding spells, and fortunately for Kevin, he did plenty of that as we prepare to get ready for our fourth game of this match, perhaps our final one of the tournament. Quick shout-out to our players that have qualified for the Players' Championship here this weekend in Abe Corrigan, Matthew Dilks, and Oliver Tomiko. They'll be joining Joe Lissette in Roanoke, Virginia at the end of this year for the Players' Championship, and one of these players will be two. And then we'll have to work our way through a very busy season number two to see who's going to be headed to the Players' Championship later this year. Three weeks! I know! I know. Three weeks. Can check right now. Give me one moment. One moment here. What's that? When is my check-in for my flight <laughs> to Pittsburgh? While you're working on that, I'm going to go over the Star City Games weekly sale for the last time this uh, week. Go ahead. i got to sell some cards to the company. So 18 days. Forward. 18 days? 18 days. The sale, this sale is not going to last that long. It's only going to last a couple more hours. So go to starcitygames.com slash sale. Save on some uh, old school cards like Power Artifact and uh, what is this? Ex Exorcist. Exorcist. Ollie from Cairo. Lightning Bolt. Some classic tracks. Those and many others over at go.starcitygames.com slash sale. New sale, 11 a.m. East Coast time. East Coast time. Probably like 18 hours from now, honestly. You said, what, what 18 days you get to check in? 18 days and two hours. You going to get that upgrade, though? Probably not. No. Where is it? Pittsburgh? Is that direct for you? No. Not very little is direct for me. Where are we connecting? Detroit Rock City, probably. Mm. You in Delta? Yeah. There it is. Connecting through. I hope. It, I really hope it's not Atlanta, man. I don't. I hope you don't have to do the down up. Connecting through Minneapolis, St. Paul. Ah, the labyrinth. Ah. Return flight connecting through Detroit. Yeah. Detroit wins the award for worst airport food for a major airport. 
Mm. It is, couldn't tell you where to eat in there. I, I typically don't. They got nine steins? No, I think that closed, actually. <laughs> and that's not even good. That was the response I was hoping for. They added nine steins, they shut it down. They got a PF Chang's. Not particularly fond of that place. Wendy's. And Qdoba on one of the far sides. Yeah, that's right. There's a Popeye's, like, in the middle. And, like, Popeye's is good. But I'm not, like, excited about it. McDonald's is always there. How do you stop? How do you feel about Max and Irma's? I don't know what that is. Okay. It's an appropriate answer once again. This pile shuffling one at a time. Hey, he can, he's up 2-1. He can do whatever he wants. Kevin, it's been a really good run so far. I've enjoyed watching you play. Uh, he's about to turn heel on him. We've got to clean this up. Okay. Have a chat with him post-match about etiquette. What about it? Oh, you want me? Okay. You well, we gotta swap. We gotta swap um, myself and Matthias here, so I can go up to him, and say, you know, congratulations, Kevin Thanicket, on uh, winning the Players Championship. Just one question. The invitational. Invitational. Continues. Excuse me. Invitational. Just mm -hmm. one question for you. Yep. Why did you pile shuffle? That's right. Yeah, you have that microphone. I have. I have exactly one question for you. No follow-ups. What was up with that pile shuffle? Ari Lax chiming in. One of Michigan's finest children. Okay. The Detroit Airport food answer is the Coney Island. That's the Coney Dog place. Okay. No clue what else is playable, but that 100% is. That assumes that you like hot dogs, which is a safe assumption about me because they are nutritious and delicious. <laughs> they're, very, they're very good for you. It's well known. <laughs> it's well <laughs> The nutritional benefits of hot dogs, airport hot dogs I think in particular. I think, I think it's under -documented. In particular, it is well documented. Yeah. <laughs> Both these players are going to take a look at their opening hands. We are underway with a godless shrine into a duress. Round tree down to 18. Cast down, command the dread horde. Duress among the options and the Elder Spell. And only two lands here for Thanakit, but you know, Jade Light Ranger is here to save the day probably. Yeah. Hands a little uh a little light on mana given the requirements here, but Jade Light Ranger hopefully can move it along. It's a little loose as the kids say. It's okay. It's got some early stuff to do. A lot of green sources in the deck to draw to. Duress you back. Elder Spell, Hero of Precinct 1, times 2, Oath of Kaya times 1. Roundtree with a similar uh, can't mulligan, can't win opening hand. Yes, one of my favorites. So, yes. Hands now, two Grizzly Bears, a six mana spell. Ever heard one, of it? One more land. Elder Spell costs 2. Oh, excuse me, I thought that was a, <laughs> excuse me, I, that was a, I thought that was a command. That's all right. That's why I'm here. Thanks, man. Forest. Ah, Thanakin drew a Hinterland Harbor. Lucky. This is another Hero of Precinct 1. Colin Roundtree, third land. Just throw that Drowned Catacombs onto the battlefield. Thanakin with the Hinterland Harbor. This is a J-Line Ranger. Two triggers, that's one. Branch Walker into the bin, and two. Tamiyo, where are you going to go? 4-3 Jade Light, BT-Dub. I mean, at this point, you may possibly you just want to pass through the Planeswalkers, given the opposing Elder Spell. But. Thought Eraser. See a hand with a Elder Spell. Command the Dreadhorde, Hydroid Crisis, and a Forest. Pretty tough decision. I'm going to go Command the Dreadhorde, though. Yeah, I mean, the crisis is, um, can be played. Uh, I think that if you didn't know about the Tamiya, there'd be an argument to take the crisis and just try to cut them off of a good four-mana play that keeps the material moving along. But once you know about the Tamiya in hand, that's, that already kind of covers that need for Thanakit. You just need to take away the top end. Makes sense. Because I think you're uh, probably working under, under the assumption here if you're calling around, we're going to play some more magic here. Right. This game's going to be pretty long. Here is Tamiyo. Got to start on five. Elevator going up or down? 
That is the question. And if it's going up, what are we naming? Kevin Thanikin has been fond of naming Nissa who shakes the world. We could see that again. So, Nissa is the name. How do we do? Jade Light, Cast Down, Watery Grave, and Tamio. Going to go to the graveyard. We're going to go over to Roundtree. He'll draw a card. I think I would have had a preference there for just getting, uh, just guaranteeing getting your money there. Just getting a card back. Period. Picking up a duress or something. Sure. We're going to head back over to Thanikit now as the Elder Spell takes care of the Tamio because it whiffed. Kevin with the Hinterland Harbor. This is Hydroid Crisis. Just going to draw one card. Just keeping the ball rolling, though. Yep. And 3 3 Flyer is bigger than everything that, Co that Colin is doing. So we head back over to Colin now. And a 3 3 Flyer also just takes a lot of the wind out of the sails of Roundtree's best draws. Something like the Fairy Time Raveler. Um, or even Narsa is a lot more modest than that, in thought that scenario. Thought Eraser going to take care of the Hydroid Crisis in hand. We're going to head back over to Kevin, who's only got a copy of the Elder Spell in hand before drawing a card for the turn, but he is reaching for mana. He's going to start by attacking with the Hydroid Crisis. Did he draw a relevant spell? If you're calling Roundtree, you're hoping the answer is no. And it is no, it's just an overgrown tomb. We go back over to Roundtree. Even a removal spell for a J-Light Ranger here would be uh, a really big tempo swing. I was almost, from Thanicus' perspective, I almost wanted to hang back with the Hydra Crisis because now this is happening. Mm -hmm. and this is bad news. Roundtree might be able to win this game just by going wide and attacking. Teferi's going to come down. It's going to bounce a J-Light Ranger, which is going to allow Roundtree to attack for two, four, five, six, seven, eight points of damage. Now, yes, Thanika does have an answer to the Teferi in the Elder Spell, but Teferi already did its job. Right. That was a huge attack. Here is Jade Light Ranger, Trigger, Woodland Cemetery. Next one, Hinterland Harbor. Drew two cards, but it's only a 2-1, which means it trades with everything that's on the yeah, battlefield. I think that attack, uh, that attack last turn for the Hydra Crisis, the ceiling on that attack is not that high, and the floor is incredibly low. And it's not like Roundtree has... Not that many draws at it. It's a any gold removal spell, any gold planeswalker makes the board look like this. Yep. Oath of Kaya, five minutes. Of right. Fairy. Yeah. yeah. Most, a lot of, of draws. It's a lot of draws. Fanicat's thinking about playing that elder spell on Teferi. I think you're better served saving it. Yeah, you just got to hang back now, I suppose. This is four, man. What do we got here? Basilica Bellhawk. Going to make you discard. Trigger twice with the Hero of Precinct 1's plural. Gain a little bit of life, too. And I like this. Everybody get in here. Just going to go wide. You're going to block the two power creatures almost assuredly. And that's going to bring across a bunch of damage. Should be six of it. What this also does a great job of here, if you're calling Roundtree, if it makes it so that Command the Dreadhorde is not really an out in this situation. Right. Just run down his life total and cut that out of the game. Fanakit's going to knock the deck. I think he's looking for Massacre Girl. I mean, it would, it would get him back to parity. He could knock off the Teferi Time Raveler and then sweep up everything else. Mm -hmm. Well, with the way that he has drawn his card and the way he's thinking about this turn, I don't think that was the draw step. That is part of the reason the Massacre Girl comes in after sideboard. He's going to check out the graveyard here. and give things a pretty long look. Doesn't have it. Doesn't have it indeed. Colin Roundtree is going to tie this thing up here against Kevin Thanikit. Two to two. Colin going to take a step away. He wants to get ready for his fifth and final game of the tournament, the one for it all. Winner of this game and match is going to go to the Players' Championship, $20,000 invites, excuse me, free entry and buys to our Opens and Classics and their likeness on a card. We're going to watch that unfold after this short break.
both these players starting to feel the pressure a little bit here. It's been fun so far to watch them battle, but there's one final game here for it all. First place, $20,000. An invite to the StarCityGames.com Players Championship later this year. Free entry and buys into our Opens and Classics here in 2019. And I can't forget about their likeness on a card. They're going to have to try to top that Andrew Jessup, Monarch Tarkin, which uh, that's not going to happen. No. But one can try. But and one can try. These games are extremely hard to play. Yes. Very mentally taxing. And we're talking about the third day of playing Magic at this level in matchups this grindy and this where the, the details matter. You can't just have these handholds for how you play the matchup. You have to look at the peculiarities of the life totals and the board positions and such. And uh, just one more game to decide it. You know, I've just been asked a question on Twitter that I'd be happy to answer. Airport with the best food. Hmm. My answer to this, quite e very easy, actually. You know, I, I can only speak to the ones that I've connected through. A tough one. Denver actually does pretty well for itself on that front. Okay. Denver does okay. Two answers. One, because I basically live here. Atlanta. Okay. Lots of gates. They got a lot of they got a lot of options for food, some sit down places in the international gates, blah blah blah. A lot of good options for food. And one airport I never fly through, and the only reason I like this airport is because the food is good. O'Hare. We'll never connect to there. That's the worst airport in the we'll world. We'll never connect to there. It's the worst airport in the world. It has magnificent food. Garrett's popcorn. It's got uh, Rick, Rick Bayless's Mexican restaurant, I believe it's called Tortoise. Got Chicago dogs aplenty, which is the best hot dog on the planet. Great food in Chicago airport. Your flight will not leave on time. You have plenty of opportunities to stay Plenty of time to eat. You can get breakfast, lunch, and dinner That's, before you take off. That is correct. <laughs> it is the world's worst airport. For how big it is and how much it has to shuttle people. And there's some people out there that don't like Atlanta airport. I don't understand what you're looking for in an airport if you don't like that place. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's big with a lot of traffic, but and it's that's very all organized. right. It's you don't like big airports. That's fine, I, whatever. But it's not like Atlanta is especially bad as far as those things go. It's got a choo-choo train, unlike O'Hare, which is or LAX non-functional, heinous design. LAX. It has charm. No, it doesn't. It has no charm. It's always under construction. For example, I used to live about ten minutes from there, and that was you know where I was flying out of. Obviously, I got the rhythm down. It is bad. It is extremely bad. But I got my I got my head around it eventually. I have not met one person that's like, hey, I like this airport. It hasn't happened. No. Let's get a quick pile in. You wanna bet? You wanna bet Kevin Pile Shuffles? Come on, yo. Even just suggesting it feels like there's like a butterfly effect. Mm -hmm. It affects the atmosphere. It's coming. I can feel it. I can feel it in my plums. Let them watch. Both nervous. Some good nervous energy. Yeah, 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 right. It, it's normal. It would be weird not to be, you know? I'm just saying, let's lay out six piles of cards. And piles of ten. <laughs> to verify. Oh! Oh! All right, I didn't have a horse in the race until now. You are safe. It is fitting. Most of these matches here in the, uh, in the, in the top eight have gone to five games. It's, a, it's that kind of format, I think. I really do. Yeah, well, play draw matters a lot. And also, I think even if you can say a deck has a particular advantage, um, it, it's not by so much that you'd expect these matchups to be 3-0s and 3-1s. Well, players are going to take a look at the opening hand. Kevin sending it back right away. Colin with a big, big, big grin on his face. Yeah. <laughs> his hand must be the nuts. <laughs> I don't know. That's the happiest I've ever seen another human being. Are you kidding me? Look at him. He's thinking about coming back to Roanoke already for the Players' Championship. Look how happy he is. He knows he's got it. I've been there. 
Happy that your opponent's mulliganing? I know, I've seen it. That too. Just, just beside yourself with rapturous joy at watching your opponent send back their hand. Always happy to take one on the house. Uh, does he have seven cards laid out? I think he's got six laid out. He's looking at six. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to stop him. Do whatever you want. but I will. <laughs> I will. I thought he had seven laid I out will. there. Green means go. Kevin begins with a water grave that earns the battlefield tapped. Got the shrine here for Colin Roundtree. Does Thanakin have a two-mana spell to play? Perhaps a discard spell. Breeding pool's going to end the battlefield untapped. Thanakin's going to fall down to 18. Drawn Catacombs into Hero Precinct 1. No negates. Cannot be targeted by negate as it is a creature. That is correct. Negate is what the, what, is what the card is in hand. We're going to head back over to Roundtree. He'll start by attacking here for 2. Thanakin's going to fall down to 16. I think he's got another hero to play. And he does. Does he have a third land? It's going to end the battlefield tapped here in Watergrave, and it's a great start here for Roundtree. You can see why he had such a big smile before the game began. Thanakit is going to play an Assassin's Trophy. Boy, that hurts. Yeah, that stings. I mean, early on in the game, the, the mana development, the ability to play two spells in one turn is it's huge. But I don't know if Thanakit could really afford to do nothing with his mana yet again. It'll be a Hinterland Harbor there for Kevin. If he wants to follow up with a Planeswalker, he kind of has to get at least one of the Grizzly Bears off the battlefield mm -hmm. because I don't have enough cover otherwise. No Planeswalker to play either, so that negate is still at the ready. You have to imagine Roundtree is aware of this. Might be leading with a specific spell to be negated. Four mana. Perhaps it's the Bell Haunt? It is. Again, play. He sniffed out that negate on turn two with the breeding pool untapped. Mm -hmm. If it was a removal spell, you probably would have seen it right there. So, Roundtree is not going to let uh, Thanakit get anything profitable from this negate as long as he can afford to do other things with his mana. Thanakit's got to figure out what card he wants to discard. It's a tough way to go here for Kevin, who has had such a great. Great top eight, and he's going to finally discard that negate that he was holding up for a couple of turns. We're going to head back over to Kevin now. He needs a little something to do here. He's just so light on resources. It, it, I mean, it's just got nothing going on right now. Daylight Ranger's going to reveal duress. I think you got to let that one go. Maybe looking for a land. Assassin's Trophy going to let that one go, too. So it's a 4-3 Jadelight Ranger, which can trade with the Basilica Bell Haunt. But I have a feeling that Mr. Roundtree might have something to do about that. And that inhale from Roundtree, you know, his shields were down that one turn, mm -hmm. and Thanakit couldn't capitalize. I think he can sense that he's about to get this wrapped up. Othakai is going to take care of that Jade Light Ranger. Here is a Thought Eraser. Boy, there goes Massacre Girl, too. That was something to work towards to clear up this whole battlefield. Thanakit's going to draw a card. It might be his last one of the tournament, unfortunately, for Kevin. And it is. Colin Roundtree is going to win this game and match here over Kevin Thanakit. Three games to two. Esper Super Friends is going to take care of Saltai Dreadhorn. For Colin Roundtree, you're going to get a whole bunch of stuff, but most notably an invite to the start.